Well, hello. How are you, New Zealand? I'm very well, thank hey. you. Hey, um, so were you surprised that Harry and Meghan stepped down from royal duties? Oh, God. Um, well, yeah, I was a little bit surprised that they would step down. I was hoping they would have the tenacity to stick it out or change what they were doing wrong that created so much public controversy. Yeah, I, I thought they would you know, own up to the package they signed up for. Samantha, do you do you worry at all about Megan? Because I mean, obviously what they're what they're going through is intense in terms of media scrutiny and it would have a huge impact on someone's mental health. Do you worry about her? Um, I really, you know, in, in all fairness and honesty, um, I think she has demonstrated no concern for our family and the royals. So, you know, I'm not going to be the first one to be in the, sitting in the back of the classroom holding my hand saying, oh, you know, oh, pick me. I'm going to defend her. I'm really not going to defend her. She's an adult. She made choices. Harry made choices. And those choices had deleterious consequences for our family, for the royals, and for so many uh, and, and that, charities. Samantha, and Samantha, that's a fair point, but it doesn't make it any easier for her, does it? Um, I don't think that's what is, it's not all about her. How about whether or not it's easier for everybody else, for the royals and for our family and for other people in the world who relied on her and who relied on them? It is not about who, what her feelings or hers. It's like when she took the opportunity at the end of that documentary on starvation in Africa to say, oh, I'm glad somebody's worried about me. My life as a royal is not easy. You don't do that when you're talking about starvation. You don't do that on the world stage. And really, um, it's kind of like poor pitiful her. No, I'm not too worried about her. I think she's done a lot of damage to a lot of people, and I think she needs to own up to it and be accountable, be gracious, be a lady, and be a humanitarian, and make things better and apologize. There's a, there's a, is that what you want from her? Do you want her to apologize? I think she, has, I, 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 she doesn't need to apologize to me, but certainly to my father, certainly to the royals, and to, I think, so many people in the public whom... She has shocked and offended. Yeah, what does she it, have to apo- minimal, that, What should she apologize to your father minimal, for? Uh, um, for for uh, ghosting him after giving her an amazing life, being a sole parent to her most of her life, giving mm-hmm. her everything and ghosting him for no reason whatsoever. This is not about her little feelings. You don't go into situations in people's lives like a bull in a china shop, do massive damage, and then bow out you know, acting like a victim. Samantha, I know you say that she she ghosted him, and, I mean, you may have a point there, but she did invite him to the wedding and he didn't turn up. That doesn't sound like somebody who's ghosting their dad. Um, No, it's not that he didn't turn up. She didn't really invite him. That was a lot of poppycock, and there was a lot of fluff. And, you know, my father was kind of trying to save face and saying that he, he was really toyed with up to the wedding, told to lay low, never really got a flight out of there and had a heart attack. The whole thing was so stressful to him and felt like a game. Mm. He was not flown out there. He was not given a proper invitation. And as her father, he should have. I'll tell you what. I mean, I know that you and your father both talk about um, reconciliation with Megan. But what confuses me is that if that is really what you want for him and what he wants for himself, why do the pair of you keep making this relationship so much worse by constantly running her down publicly in interviews like you're doing right now? Well, it's not, it's not, you know, when people ask us questions, we answer honestly. We didn't come to you and say, oh, we have something to say. So when the public and the press ask us, we're not going to candy coat the truth. We're not going to lie. She has treated people horribly, and we are not going to enable it by silence or by fluff. And I don't care how Hollywood tries to put an amber glass over everything. It is not nice behavior. It's not humane. It's no, but, really but by, horrible. But by, by, by contrast, your father saying that if she doesn't respond within 30 days, he'll keep giving interviews every 30 days. That's not nice either, is it? Well, you know, I think I think his tone was misinterpreted. I think at this point he's brokenhearted. He is 75. He's getting older. He is exhausted. Um, he could die any day after having two heart attacks. And you know what? He shouldn't have to go through this and grovel how disgusting of her to make him publicly grovel with his health being so strained. Any gracious humanitarian who is loving and kind would never have let it get to this point. And there is no way that anyone can say, oh, she's just cool and modern and oh, she should skip about her way and everybody should respect it. You don't crap on people 
So this is not about her feelings. This is not about, you know, everyone should just try and handle it privately to spare her reputation. Screw her reputation. She needs to be an adult and do the right thing. Samantha, you know, for all, I I mean, I have siblings and I have a family as well. And for all of the things that Harry and Meghan have done that are hypocritical and that deserve criticism, I think it's heartbreaking to watch you guys fight like this in public. Is there anything that she can do to just make this stop? Well, you know, um, it, it's really not rocket science uh, that she could have reached out by phone or she could have shown up. If, if she, she can, called you, would you oh, take well, that phone call? Um, well, she's not going to call me. I'm sure if she called my father, he would. But it's not like, you know, um, she if she can pop around Paris and jet around at lunch, she certainly could have made contact with our father, who has given her everything, the sweat off his brow, every nuance, almost being a single parent to her her whole life. That's buried in PR. It's all a bunch of lies. She, she You know, parents don't expect uh, to be paid back, but they expect a little bit of gratitude and a little bit of reciprocation. And by God, without him, she would be a waitress at best. He gave her everything. And this is just disgusting treatment. There's no other way to slice this apple. So at a, at a minimal before he dies, she owes him a phone call, some gratitude and some love, or she's an absolute sociopath if she doesn't, you know, humble herself enough to do the right thing. Samantha, I'm going to ask you one last question, and it's a tough one, so I want to brace you for it, but are you jealous of her? You know, when all of this started, what when I used to look into my baby sister's eyes, I wanted the world for her. I loved her. I loved her so much. I mean, my hopes were when all of this started that she would become a great diplomat and humanitarian, that she could be a great change agent in the world, and it was I was bubbling over with love. I just thought, wow, you know, and instead of just being a flaky actress doing the Hollywood thing, she would really make great change in the world. And then progressively, I saw all of these actions that totally contradicted that scenario, including ghosting the whole family, uh, treating the royals with so much disrespect and really just wreaking havoc uh, with everything. And, And I felt like, wow, you know, it's really sad because she's doing the opposite of that. Am I jealous? No, I'm embarrassed. I'm hurt for my dad. Um, I've never been jealous. My book was never a slamming tell all, by the way. That was a media construct. Um, and, and so while all, when all of this started in interviews, I, you know, even when I said good, great things and defended her, nobody talked about that. But progressively, I saw that she wasn't, you know, deserving of praise. She was behaving in very hurtful ways, ghosting an entire family without reason. Um, ghosting, you know, treating the royals with such disrespect and uh, and and breaking rules everywhere. I thought, no, this is this is almost cruel and inhumane. It's not humanitarian. It's just the opposite. And so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And I think she owes, you know, a lot of people some, you know, graciousness, kindness, apologies, and certainly reciprocation. The, the royals welcomed him, welcomed her into their lives. Um, I'm sure they're very, you know, concerned with security and they're very suspicious of people and very protective. And they welcomed her with open arms, made her one of the Fab Four, and and gave her an opportunity that you know billions of people would love to have. And I just feel like, um, you know, she tossed it aside like a dish rag, and it, it, it that part of it is shocking.